Hi everyone, it's Lady T here and welcome to my channel. So I'm just here to introduce to you a seminar that I hosted online talking about making healthy eating a lifestyle. Now I have a separate group called Live Grow Excel that I use that as a platform to encourage you out there to live, grow and excel in whatever business idea you have. One thing I'm passionate about, and you've probably seen it across this channel if you are part of the family, and if you're not, please join my family and subscribe. But one thing that you'll see that I'm passionate about is people doing things, business, ideas. I love supporting, I love encouraging, I love helping. So in Live, Grow, Excel, I hosted a meeting. Now, this is not necessarily to do with business, but this is more to do with our health. How to make healthy eating permanent now i know i struggle and i've struggled for years but i think i'm getting better and i'm not going to use the d word the diet because personally for me they don't last but the lifestyle does so i had a very lovely lady mo join me and talk to us about how we can make healthy eating a permanent thing so enjoy this webinar. Please feel free to share it. I know it's not your average five minute video, but it's a good session to listen to. Pick up some nuggets because at the end of the day, health is wealth. So if we can change some of our attitudes and our behaviours for the long term, we will benefit in the long term. Enjoy the seminar. Okay, so good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Making Healthy Eating a Permanent Thing. Permanent being the main word. I know that many of us, including myself here, have uh, attempted, started, uh, and either somehow along the way we drop off or we get distracted. So hopefully with uh, Mo here, not myself, but with Mo here, hopefully we can be encouraged to try and turn it into a permanent lifestyle, which all in all becomes a huge benefit. Right, so just a quick introduction as to who I am. My name is Ruth Odenuga. And I am, um, I have a few handles to my name and a few areas of things that I do. Um, you can see all the four handles in the four corners here. More importantly, you've come to this event via um, an invitation from the Live Grow Excel group, possibly. And what is Live Grow Excel? Basically, about three years ago, I decided to just come together with a network of ladies um, to encourage each other. One thing that I am personally passionate about is encouraging women to oh I say women but equally men but encouraging women to do their thing um, in business or whatever it is and sometimes you just need that nudge or that support or that idea encourager and hopefully um, you can have sisters that can support you in that and that was how uh, Live Grow Excel came about and then at the turn of into 2021 I decided that um, I would like to run a few webinars, because obviously be it in the COVID situation that we are, but run a few webinars that hopefully would benefit people in different areas of their lives, some being career, some being health, some being finances, and some of you may have been on previous webinars that we've done this year. Um, also, you see there, 360 Hype, one of my very first businesses that I started all of, all of 12, 13 years ago. Um, I do event management, I host and run events, and I still do that till today. Um, in the top right hand corner, in the last couple of years, I think 2018, I decided to um, uh, delve more into my Christian faith, be it that I'm a Christian, and I decided to launch a clothing brand line that defines who I believe I am as a Proverbs 31 woman, a Christian young lady. And it's basically a branding line that encourages us women 
and men and children now as God has had it and as it has grown to be proud of wearing the word, be proud of having affirmations that declare who you are and what you're about. Then in the bottom right hand corner, alongside of creating my clothing brand, I decided to document my Christian journey via YouTube. Um, I think sometimes people think that there are staple ways of uh, how a Christian should be. Um, and I've just basically come to the YouTube land to show that I'm a growing Christian, I'm a growing young lady in my faith. I have faults, I have errors, and I know that God accepts me the way I am, but this is my journey. And maybe in some areas you can benefit from, or you can gain some um, encouragement from and share. So that's me. So before we go into the main lady of today, I'm just gonna ask us a couple of questions. And I would like at this point for you to help me to engage with me on the chat. And a couple of questions I wanna ask is, who here has um, been on a diet? If you've been on a diet of some sort over the course of your life, type in number one, just give me a one. And if I don't see anyone in this chat, then something's down, okay. So who in some form has been in some form of diet, encouraged to go to that support to someone on a diet where, okay, awesome, I can see the ones coming in. Now, if you can take it that one step further, and if you could tell me what diets you've been on, name them. There are many out there I'm very aware of. So give us an idea, throw them out there. Now, we're putting out there these diets that we've been on. This is not to encourage us to go on diets, um, but it's just also to see uh, what is out there and what we do do. Okay, so I have here, I've fasted before for 21 days. Okay, when you say you fasted, that's no food and just water liquid, I'm assuming. Um, no carbs, we've got keto, low carbs. Okay, me, myself, personally, I think many moons ago, I've tried, um, I've tried uh, Slim Fast, Slim Fast. I've tried Slim Fast, I've tried Weight Watchers. Okay, yeah, I can see um, Slimming World on here. Um, I've seen, we've, I think across everyone, 2.5 fasting, okay? Herbal Life, wow, well, see? Cambridge, Lighter Life, Low Carb. And I think that just goes to show you that there are so many, and I will use the word, I will use the word diet out there and to me diet is diet is do now and it will stop after a while that's what i see a diet intermittent fasting okay awesome i see that now my next question on leading on to that and in this question i want you to answer with a number two so who from everyone that has listed that they have been on the diet who has fallen off the diet who has got distracted whilst on the diet who didn't finish the diet if you haven't finished if you got distracted drop me a number two in fact, if it was me, I'll be typing two, 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 because I am so guilty, so so guilty. And I'll take it one step further. And if you don't mind, if somebody just wants to give me an example, I see two, 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 two. If somebody wants to give me an example and give me a reason as to why you have fallen off in the past, you don't need to go personal and too deep, but just give an idea or give me a reason as to why you dropped off. Two, but to be far after okay. okay after a year okay people get <laughs> she got hungry <laughs> someone says ache um boredom okay i'm sure mo is listening to that i can hear boredom special events yep. that that's very true you can be on a roll you can be on your diet doing your thing and then there's that one event you go to and you go to the buffet table or they serve you and you're like and then it literally just makes you fall off. Yep, not sustainable long term. <laughs> I just lose the plot. Discipline. Yep, yep. I'm with you on that one. My discipline levels can be, yep, overhyped. Okay, so I'm assuming what you're saying is the diet has been overhyped and then you get tired of it. I'm assuming. But you know what? Thank you so much for your contributions. As to your awesome, yep, awesome. Time of the month, yes, for us ladies that are on the call. Time of the month is a brilliant excuse to fall off and not get back on. And then, or is it that we get back on halfway through the month and then the time of the month suddenly has started to creep around the corner again anyway, they're like, oh, you know what? I'll do it again the next month and the next month. And that's what diets do to us. 
So I've just put here a couple of little quotes that I found online, which I find funny in one end and some quite serious on the other end. The one that I love the best is I followed a diet, but it didn't follow me back. So I unfollowed it. And I just, to me, I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. But the best one that I like is exercise is king. Nutrition is queen. Put them together. You have kingdom. Now, today, we're not going to be necessarily specifically honing in on exercise. Um, although, actually, I don't know. Maybe Mo might do. But again, exercise is another awesome thing to create and put into your life. You know? So everything here is not the D word. It is the L word. We're all about the lifestyle. So on that note, I'd like to take my seat. I'd like to introduce the beautiful Mo from Petite Mouge. I hope I've got that pronunciation correct. Hi, my name is Marina K. Farinto. I am the um, and CEO of Petit Mouge. Today, I'm going to take this talk about um, making healthy eating a permanent lifestyle. Um, we are a well-being and healthy eating business. We offer one-to-one -one cooking classes and corporate cooking sessions with companies. We also teach people how to cook nutritional meals on a budget to change their lifestyle. Our mission is to help introduce people to healthy food sources and choices, build their cooking skills and prepare healthy meals. As a disclaimer, I'm not a um, qualified nutritionist yet or dietitian, but this presentation is to just bring awareness to the choices that people have and to also um, tell people to after this if they decide to make a lifestyle change to always go and seek out a nutritionist a dietitian or seek medical um their personal um, practitioner for further advice so um with my um cooking classes i get a lot of people asking me why i started this healthy eating um, journey and i um go to explain that um it's a lifestyle choice for me um, I'm disclosing that I am both diabetic type one. I was born with diabetes, so I didn't um, um, take myself into a coma and became diabetic. I was born with diabetes. And only recently I was discovered as also being um, sickle cell SC, which is a rare form of sickle cell. And it was to, um, presented in my life later on because of poor health choices. It presented itself in my life. So why healthy eating is essential? Healthy eating has many health benefits, such as reducing the risk of heart disease, stroke, obesity, type 2 diabetes. It can also boost a person's mood and provide them with more energy and prolonged life. Um, during this lockdown, I had a lot of clients reach out to me and to ask for help about um, learning how to change what they're eating at home since we've been um, stagnant and being at home during lockdown and not being able to be active. And um, a lot of feedback that I get from my clients is that the menus that I've created with them, it's helped them to improve their mood. And um, a lot of people have been suffering, especially in this third lockdown with brain fog and just working with them to get um, to learn about different foods that can help them power through those times of low energy and um, mood swings. So the, so a lot of people are asking diet and um, lifestyle attitude, what's the difference? And it was so interesting, um, the questions Tayo asked about um, how many people have yo-yo dieted and to see the response that a lot of you have tried different diets, keto diets and all that. And um, honestly, in my journey of finding like um, my lifestyle goals and my eating healthy um, skills, I did start off with dieting, but and it was based on what the doctors were telling me is they were offering me a life based on medication and I refused to live on medication. Like they, I was basically given the option that you take like say 12 medications a day. And I pushed my, and put my foot down that I would like to learn an alternative. So I pushed to see a, nutrit a nutritionist and dietitian to work with me so that I'm able to become more healthy in life and not rely on medica conventional medications. So let's look at diet as an overview. Um, most traditional diets are defined by a handful of characteristics. So they, um, you can um, characterize them as good or bad. <clears throat> 
weight gain is lost quickly in a set period of time. So that is what diets really do. They progress in dependent numbers on the scale. Calorie consumption is greatly restricted. So this is what diets do to you. This is what they're designed to do in a short period of time. So you hear people, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I want to lose weight. Now everyone is looking forward to June um, 21st to go and party and see and try on their new outfits. A lot of people are jumping into yo-yo diets to, um, to look skinnier or slimmer. It's more superficial diets are, are aimed for that short-term um, loss of um, weight gain. So what makes a lifestyle change? It's behavior that you can stick to for a long time haul. So measuring progress beyond a number on the scale, being intentional about what you're eating healthily, nutrition and whole foods to nourish your, boot, um, your, your body. So you're thinking about things that you're eating intentionally and your portions. Practicing moderation, not restriction. Exercising on a regular and consistent basis. Losing weight at a safe and healthy pace. So it's not drastic change, it's a, it's a, um, a slow pace change. When I talk about exercising with different people, I use my, um, myself as an example. Um, when I thought of exercise in the beginning, I was talking to my medical practitioners. I thought exercise meant gym and I hate gyms. I think it, it, I just don't like the concept of people crammed in one area or um, sweating and it, I just didn't like it. But I found that anything that involves music, anything that involves a bit of aggression, I loved. So I tried um, boxing and during lockdown, since I've not been able to go out, I've really taken on skipping for 20 minutes a day and then also taking long walks. I enjoy walking. I enjoy like woodland areas and just taking the time to just clear my mind. And that's improved both my health and my mental health as well. So the conclusion for that is that when you focus on long-term um, lifestyle changes, instead of short-term dieting, you will note a few things. First, you're gonna be kinder to your body. You will notice that you'll be less likely to experience extreme hunger, food deprivation, weakness, exhaustion, mental issues. Lifestyle changes teach you to listen to your body intentionally. You will also notice that even though weight loss may be slower, it is more permanent. Research show that short-term dieters are likely to regain most of all of their weight they have lost. This can be more discouraging in the long run. So when we're talking about diets, it's also good to know about the food groups and what they do for our bodies. So we're gonna be talking about good and bad carbs. These are um, food that gives us fuel throughout the day. So when we're talking about good and bad carbs, we're actually talking and referring to simple and complex carbs. So simple carbs are carbs that are broken down quickly by the body that we use for energy. <clears throat> you can also find simple carbs in natural foods such as fruits, milks and milk products. They also find in processed and refined sugars as candy, table sugar, syrup and soft drinks. The majority of carbohydrate intake should come from complex carbohydrates, starches and occurring sugars rather than refined sugars. What are complex carbs? Complex carbs include vegetables, beans, whole grains, and peas. They are made up of long chains of sugar molecules that the body take longer to break down before they're absorbed. This means that you have a constant source of energy to keep you throughout the day. Food with complex carbs also has more fiber, more minerals, and vitamins that simply, that simple carbohydrates. This is why it provides more energy. This is the main reason they're referred to as good carbs. In a nutshell, it is complex carbs are unprocessed or refined, but already include fiber that naturally occur in the food. So we're gonna go into portion control. I love this um, learning about portion control. This has helped me both greatly as um, a diabetic and just losing weight um, gradually. I feel like in this area, um, the um, West African and, and West Indies um, culture, we don't really take portion control and consideration when we're eating and how, um, how 
great an impact it is in terms of losing weight and being intentional about your portion control wherever you are. Um, so these are two brief videos that is going to um, tell you about how to portion control in easy ways that I learned from my nutritionist. And it's um, adaptable to anyone um, wherever you are in the world. Candy Cumming, a registered dietitian with Sharp Healthcare, and today we're going to talk about portion control because it's really hard to figure out how to set up a plate. I like to use my hands and a clock. Well, we want about two cups of vegetables on our plates. So that would be one fist for one cup and the second fist for the second cup. When we put the starchy thing on there, you know your rice or your potato or your corn, you just need one fistful or one cup of food. And then when it comes to the protein part, you know, the meat, the chicken or fish, you're looking at about four fingers because each finger roughly is about the size of an ounce of meat. So you can think of your four fingers or the palm of your hand is about the same size. Or if you want to, you can think of the deck of cards as the appropriate size of meat, chicken or fish on your plate. So I mentioned earlier that I always use a clock too because I like to set up my plate thinking of it as a clock face. Here from 12 to three, you got your four fingers of meat, chicken or fish, whatever you prefer. From three to six, you got that one fistful or one cup of starchy food. And then from 12 to six on the other side, you have your two cups of vegetables. So what does this look like when we actually set up a plate? Here it is. Here's your clock face all dressed up with food. So you have this beautiful, uh, two cups of vegetables here, your four fingers or your deck of cards worth of meat, chicken or fish, and down here, your one cup of starchy food. When you get all of that on a plate, you have only about 400 calories. It's really nutritious and really filling. Be mindful though, if you added a lot of extra butter or sour cream or fried all that food, you could double or triple the calories on that plate and kind of blow the whole thing with portion control. So remember uh, the clock face, and your hands and you can set up a really healthy plate. And now you've just learned some really basics on portion control. So we've just seen the easy hand method to portion control, which you can use anywhere in that you are. Um, I use this a lot when I go to um, parties or unfamiliar areas where I'm eating. And I was discussing with Tayo about the um, the way that I, um, when I'm cooking with my clients and with myself, I use my hands a lot to measure what I'm going to gauge for on my plate to eat or how to serve and tell my clients how to serve their food as well. And I was saying to Tayo that a lot of us overeat more than, um, than we're supposed to. And I was saying to her that um, she might serve her, her husband um, food according to her palm but he, he's not necessarily getting the right portion control for his own body weight and his needs and I say that the thumb was also is a good measurement for oil butter mayonnaise and ketchup so I used this thumb my thumb to measure the amount of ketchup and mayonnaise and um, oils that of this um food that I'm not meant to be overindulging in like the woman said in the video that these can easily um knock out your your nutritional um, meal if you overeat um, on different on the sources and the um, stuff that you eat okay so I was explaining to Tayo that when you um, are cooking a pot of stew and stuff how I regulate the oil that I'm using to the ingredients I'm using is that I look at how many people are going to eat from this pot of stew and I measure my oil according to my thumb size or reg according to my thumb size so that I use oil um, usage correctly during meals. Also, I make sure that I have the right amount of grains on my food because I'm diabetic again. I have to be careful of the different carbs I'm eating and grains I'm eating and legumes and beans. So um, the next method I'm gonna show you is the um, healthy eating plate method as well. So for you visual learners, this might help you. So we talked about um, in the previous video, the woman talk, talked about the, um, the clock hand on the plate. 
And so this will explain further what that means when you use that method also if you prefer not to use the hand. What can you make your family for dinner that's healthy and tastes good? You can follow the plate method. This healthy eating plan works for everybody, including people with diabetes. Indeed, making nutritious, healthy meals will be a snack. What's a healthy plate? It's a way to control your serving sizes where you don't have to count. Simply use a seven inch plate for children and a nine inch plate for adults. First, divide the plate in half and fill one of them with vegetables. There are two types of vegetables, starchy like potatoes, corn, peas, or plantains, and non-starchy like zucchini, jicama, cucumbers, carrots, or salad. If you have diabetes, fill half your plate with non-starchy vegetables. Then fill one quarter with whole grains or starches like brown rice, corn, beans, or whole wheat pasta. In the other quarter, add some lean protein like tofu, grilled fish, or chicken. What about adding a side of tortilla or bread? It's hard to resist, I know! <laughs> The trick is serve yourself a smaller portion of the other starches on your plate instead. To complete your meal, add a drink like unsweetened coffee, tea, or a glass of milk. But remember that drinking eight ounces of milk affects your blood sugar just as it would if you ate another tortilla or a slice of bread. Or you can also choose water with a squeeze of lemon or lime. How you create your plate is up to you. You have many options as long as you remember to follow these healthy guidelines. And ta-da, you're all set. You might be thinking, how can you use the plate method to make vegetable beef soup or other meals? Simply follow the same idea. Fill your pot with low sodium broth and lots of healthy vegetables like corn, cabbage, zucchini, carrots, and onions, and some lean beef but not too much. Just like you'd put on a quarter of your plate for each person you're serving. If you want, add your favorite type of bread on the side. And you've got the right amount for a healthy meal. Mmm, mmm, enjoy. Um, so you've just seen the yeah. health option. Yes, Kim. Okay. So um, I'm just going to ask people to unmute themselves if they can um, kind of figure out which plate do you think is more healthy? So on, one, so on plate A, you have grilled chicken on skewers, bulgur jollof, red cabbage coleslaw. On the right, you have grilled chicken thighs, you've got rice and you've got plantain. By just gauging on, on what's on the plates, which would you say is a healthy, balanced plate? If you drop your answer A or B into the chat, so which one's more healthier, A or B? I think I saw a B. <laughs> See? B has more food. <laughs> Coming from the person that stopped dieting because they used to get hungry. Exactly. Some of you are probably falling off your, your chair thinking, oh my God, I'm going to starve. But actually... Somebody it, says anything with plantain has to be <laughs> has to be healthy. But you've just seen on your um, vid on your video that, yes, plantain is part of a... Um, it's a um, complex um, refined carb. But also you've got to be wary about the sugar content in plantain and how it adds to your plate as well. And can you see that how the food has um, taken up most of the plate in plate B compared to um, the plate in plate A, the food in plate A? You can clearly see there's white space around the, um, the food, but you can also see that the veg is outdoing the um, rice. Okay, what plate do you think is more healthy? Plate A or plate B? Now I want you to focus on what's on the plate in terms of the veg that's probably used and 
in but not the quantity what plates do you think is more healthy you got turkey meatballs in plate a with spiralized courgette spaghetti or you or plate b which you got beef meatballs in tomato sauce with normal spaghetti which one do you think is more healthy it's interesting that someone says a but i like b <laughs> <laughs> yes the hungry person has said b yes <laughs> <laughs> all right so okay you can see that plate a is more nutritious it's more um it's got more veg on it it's still spaghetti and meatballs but done healthily using leaner meat and more veg where you have beef you have tomato and normal pasta that will bring your blood sugar higher and that would not and that will spike your blood sugar as well where plate a would give you a longer lasting source of energy to work from where plate b will add weight and will spike your um, blood sugar why has it gone back okay swap into healthy options a lot of my clients ask me um what alter alternatives can they use in their day-to-day -day lives? And I start off with um, sugar, salt, flour, and um, any sweeteners, because these are the things that we use daily in all of our um, cooking. And they have helped me in terms of making a lifestyle a journey, not drastically changing what I enjoy eating. So not taking anything away, but just swapping healthier options to slowly bring the weight down and control my blood sugars as a diabetic. And it's been from a young age. My mom never really bought or even indulged in us eating a lot of um, biscuits um, and juice was rarely in the house. Um, we drank a lot of water and I currently work in um, early years education and you can see the slow and steady rise of childhood obesity, um, also affecting children's attainment levels. So this is why I'm so passionate about targeting mothers to also change not their lifestyle but also change their family eating habits as well because I'm seeing how it's having an effect on a lot of children growing up concentrating in the classroom and actually developing long-term illnesses like diabetes and um, other other ailments as well. So I always tell, in terms of the area of flour, um, I ask and challenge my clients to use, um, to ditch their normal standard white flour, it's, um, and go for alternatives like almond flour and chickpea flour and to encourage them to cook from scratch. So with almond flour, I use that a lot in my baking, in um, if I want to make any cookies or any pies, I use my almond flour. If I want to make um, homemade pasta, I use chickpea flour. If I want to make any bread, I use whole wheat flour. These are alternatives that gives you a, last, um, a longer source of energy. Um, I challenge them to swap their white sugar for um, date sugar, which is a natural source of sugar from fruits, dates, it's a complex carb, and coconut sugar. It has um, a more, um, it just, it, it, I've switched it recently. I started from white sugar and then I went to brown sugar and then I'm eventually at coconut sugar and date sugar. And I use them interchangeably for different things, but they bring a certain element of flavor as well to whatever you add it to. So I enjoy that. And a lot of my clients prefer coconut sugar because they used to anyway, like co coconut milk. Again, I don't condone people just completely cutting out s snacks and things that they're used to, but to find options to swap to. So again, people might say that they are um, on their period and they enjoy eating chocolate. Okay, you have a choice to not just munch on a dairy milk chocolate, but you can also have a choice to just swap to a dark chocolate, which gives you health benefits and a higher cocoa content. So that's also important. And then meat and beef a lot of the beef that we're eating today is um being red and pumped with a lot of um chemicals that actually um change our cell 
multiplication in our body. It's it's a long process, but I've started to encourage my um, my clients to have meat free days and to eat more fish and change to alternatives like turkey and chicken which is a leaner source of meat. I know I'm talking majority to African people. We like our goat meat, we like our beef, we like to kill it, we like to fry it, we like to bake it. But if you want to lose weight in a longer longer term, switching to these alternatives or having meat-free days or, ha- or, or eating less of meat and switching to fish and, and baking it, it could help us in losing quite a lot of weight. I found, cutting back my beef and lamb intake has really made a profound impact on my mood and talking to my nutritionist that said they say well a lot of beef and the meat that we eat today are pumped with so many chemicals that might affect people's um, um, growth and hormone imbalance and stuff like that there's a lot to go into in that area another option um that i i challenge people to change is um as west africans we eat a lot of rice and white rice is not particularly good for us because it's refined. But I mean, what I found interesting um, lately was that ofada rice, which is local rice grown in West Africa, has a high intake of vitamins and minerals that we don't know of. But because when, I don't know if anyone has cooked ofada rice, the smell of it repel it is, is really repulsive. It depends on what region you get the rice from, but it actually is a local grown rice, which holds a lot of nutritional value. So trying that as an alternative um, is, has been beneficial and introducing that to um, English people has been quite um, funny for me to add that. Um, Bulgur wheat is something that I've really taken up on and I've spread the message to so many people now about using that as an alternative to rice in our diet. So um, using bulgur wheat in jollof rice, in fried rice, because of its low um, sugar content and its um, nutritional value, I've asked people to swap to that. So eating healthily on a budget. This is a lot of clients ask me, how do you do it? How did you change? How did you get these food sources? How do you source it out? And to be honest, during this lockdown, it has been really challenging because I'm not um, mobile and able to go out to get a lot of my food sources. But I mean, I've really found alternatives that's been good. First of all, I've been sourcing out food that's been local to me. I live in an area where I'm surrounded by farms. I didn't know that until I did a research and got a lot of people to be delivering to me. There's a lot of, if you live in the area of Dartford or Kent, we are surrounded by farms and and, um, bakeries that actually deliver to us. So I encourage people to also go out and reach out to them and go to your local farms, pick out strawberries and grapes and stuff like that. We've got a lot of fruit farms around us, especially in the Dartford area. So eating healthy on a a budget. So I do this and I, this is why I'm a great believer in cooking from scratch because you actually get to see what you're eating. You get to control what you're eating. And then you also are able to intentionally know what you're eating as you're, because you cooked it. A lot of um, my pet hate, is going to a restaurant, tasting the quality of food and knowing they haven't used good quality ingredients. I can spend a lot of money on ingre- on good ingredients and I can tell when restaurants are scraping back on ingredients. And especially now that we're going into, um, we've gone into lockdown, a lot of businesses are trying to save money. You're gonna find a lot of restaurants are gonna scrape back on ingredients. You can already see it in, um, in restaurant trains like McDonald's and KFC um, and Nando's, a lot of their their um, the quality of their food has been scraped back. So cooking from scratch, so that you know what you're putting in your food, you can control the oil, you can cook, control the salt and intake. Buying in bulk, I know we're Nigerians, most of us, we buy heavily in bulk. We go to ad days, we do one month shopping, we go to Costco, we do what um, um, six month shopping. We're, we're really good at that and that's why we're able to save quite a lot. But buying bulk helps you to plan ahead or what you, to plan your meals um, ahead. Um, another thing that I'd say that is I found online retailers that help you buy whole foods on bulk and that's wholefoods.com.co.uk they have helped me a lot in terms of finding beans um, 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 legumes and nuts and 
and um, dry foods that you necessarily are going to find expensive if you go to your local supermarket where it's cheaper to buy it in bulk online. Um, eBay as well has also helped me in terms of buying in bulk your spices. A lot of people um, buying spices from supermarkets, they actually rip you off because they give you, they pike up the price for a small amount of the spices, those little jars. So buying in bulk helps you to um, budget and to save money. Meat free days also because you're eating less meat, meat is expensive. You and vegetables are less expensive, especially if you go to like your sun, Saturday markets and um, Sunday markets to get your vegetables. It's much cheaper when you buy it in bulk because you're seeing larger quantities there than meat. Um, again, meat free again. And then planning your meals ahead. I cannot tell you how many times I looked at my um, my Uber Eats account and I could see the times where I did not plan my meals ahead, I spent too much money on ordering food because I grew tired. But get into a pattern to planning your meals ahead and also doing that with your family and planning your meals and researching and really going into finding new things to plan your meals ahead is it will save you a lot of money and budgeting. And I, I'm just realizing there's a few slides that I've skipped. I've just realized that I've skipped in terms of understanding what foods that you so again with your butter chain your meals it's good to all these um carbs the complex carbs vegetables beans whole grains and peas the more you bulk onto them and buy and bulk buy them the less money you spend in terms of sourcing them out on a day-to-day -day basis so you will find that beans and whole grains, like but find brown rice, couscous, um, 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 kidney beans. If you buy them in the, in the shop, in a supermarket, it's more expensive. But if you buy it in bulk, it's cheaper for you and it lasts longer as well. So, yeah, good health. So the conclusion of all this talk is to encourage people to eat healthy. Good health is not just the absence of diseases or illness. It is a state of complete physical and mental social well-being. This means eating a balanced diet, getting regular exercise, avoiding tobacco and drugs, and getting plenty of rest. One of the major killers for black people especially is that we do not eat well and we don't rest well. We are taught and programmed to work harder, to work long hours, but we're not really good at been working smart and taking time to rest. And I would encourage a lot of people to, as well as eating healthily, but to also taking time to rest and to also work smart in your life and, and just take care of what you're eating, being intentional about what you put on your plate and what you serve your family. Thank you for listening. Awesome. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can find me on all my socials, which is on your screen right now. Thank you. Awesome. Mo, thank you so, so much. Okay. Some questions being quite comical, some questions being quite serious, but all the same. And I think, to be honest, I think it's because it genuinely is a, um, I'm not going to use the word struggle, but it's genuinely something that we as people, and that it, we are from all races, struggle to put the discipline. I know somebody earlier on talked about discipline and trying to keep the discipline. So if I was to just throw it out here and ask people to put into the chat that how many people here genuinely um, associate what we eat with our health or who, how many of us really think about what we eat in reflection of our health. And I too, I know of a few people that through health issues, they have had to change their diet and then their, their health issue may not have gone but it makes it better. So it kind of makes us think that if we are a lot of our attitude to health or to food is better from an early age. And yes, agreed, some of us are no longer uh, young-ish, but we can always start today. I've said it so many times, health is wealth. You know, no matter how much money we have in the bank, if you are not healthy and living well, that money is, is for me, the money's not wealth, it's health. Awesome, okay. Earlier on in the chat, we had someone say, how can I portion control snacks? 
and that they've tried to reduce snacking to the weekend, but the fear factor of reducing snacking to the weekend makes them feel like they're going to over binge because they didn't have it during the week. Mm. This is something that I'm even looking into myself and I've changed. First of all, what I did was I chucked out everything that was going to attract my eyes. So I do not, I only have a small cupboard which my nieces and nephews know to go to to get their snacks when they come over to my house. But I let me tell you, there's chocolates that I have in my cupboard that are a year old because I never go to that cupboard. It's for them when they come around and my visitors as well. But around me, I have jars of dry fruit. I have um, jars of nuts. I love nuts. I uh, make my own hummus as well. And I always cut up like cucumbers and celery and um carrots which i snack on throughout the throughout the day and my fridge 50 percent of it is fruits and veg and the other stuff is dairy and 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 you know and cheese and stuff like that but even with that in mind i'm always finding myself in a, in the supermarket spending more time in the fruit and veg area and I think I told um, Taya at one point, every week I challenge myself or every shopping trip, I challenge myself to pick out fruit or veg that I've never tried before and then go back home, research it and try to create a recipe or something new with it. So I challenge myself to eat different um, um, fruit and veg that I'm unfamiliar with. And I think especially in the West African culture, we don't really venture that. Uh, we don't venture out into different food. We don't go into the Asian aisle. We don't go into the Italian aisle. We, we hardly even pick out fruit like squash, pak choy. Um, I'm a very eclectic cook, so I can cook Asian food one day, the next day I'm cooking Italian, the next day I'm cooking Greek food. And I tend to eat a lot of Greek food because of the, the, the nutritional value that they use in their food and ingredients they use in their food and the high quality of ingredients like olive oil. They eat a lot of tomatoes. They eat sort of a, a lot of raw salads, which I have adopted into my diet as a diabetic person. But I tend to just, I like to venture out. One of my favorite things to do is to go to Borough Market. Now, when you go to Borough Market on London Bridge, you're going to see the most weirdest looking fruit and veg. But that attracts me to understand and want to venture out and pick those things out. Mm. I'm an adventurous cook. So I challenge my um, my clients to also do the same. Yeah. And be surprised that actually I tried a new veg today and it tasted nice. Actually, I found this recipe and it tasted nice with this vegetable. And they're funny enough, they've changed their eating habits that way. And some of them, a lot of them have got bored during lockdown because they're eating the same food that they used to. No one's able to just go out and go to a restaurant which they of their choice. So they've had to bring the restaurant experience to them. Mm. Yeah. Okay, no, um, um, brilliant tips there. And I think um, to, the question, to, the, to the question about the snacking, mm. from my perspective, I'm a massive snacker. Mm. Um, and I think in my lifestyle change because of, and I think you've got to know yourself. Mm. And if I decide today to completely cut out snacks, for me, it's not going to work mm. because I am a snacker. Mm. And if I'm going to be a hundred percent honest, <laughs> I've got a, a little dark chocolate biscuit dark here. Chocolate. But, but I'm going to explain this dark chocolate biscuit. Dark and I'll, chocolate? It's, it's, dark, it's dark chocolate. And what's um, the cocoa we, percentage of it? Okay, I've, I've not looked at the cocoa percentage. Look, just give me some... Have let, let, feel like you have to go to high-end shops. Agreed. But hang on one second. So before you get all posh on me and tell me the percentage, so the person that asked the question, for me, the way I have managed it is I've tried to take the best of the rest. Mm. So agreed. Biscuits are not ideal. But I'm a snacker. So if I do want to try and incre uh, increase, keep the snacking in my lifestyle and reduce it, I've left all the um, custard creams and whatnot. And I'm looking for the dark chocolate option because I know dark chocolate is good for your health. So for instance, I'll eat dark chocolate. I'll go to Audi, I'll go to Tesco's and buy the dark chocolate bars and I'll eat that because I hear everything that you're saying about stay more in the um, fruit and veg aisles. But for me, fruit and veg is not a snack. <laughs> It's not gonna. It's not gonna appease to me. So, I mean, if so you, I've got to keep it a little bit realistic. I'm um, sorry before I cut you up, Mo. You saying that you're keeping it till the weekend? Personally, 
I wouldn't do that because you're right. You will wait till the weekend will come and it will come at you. The smarties, the whatever. Put it in your plan mm. to snack. Yeah. Have, have it in your lifestyle yeah. to snack, but manage the snack, manage the quantity. And yeah, what you said about the nuts, I eat a lot of nuts. I did eat nuts before. I eat a lot of nuts now mm. kind of thing. But again, there's a balance because too much of everything isn't good. Yeah. It's not, what, what we're talking here is not restricting yourself. Don't restrict yourself because your body's actually telling you it needs sugar. Absolutely. It's now giving your body the right kind of sugar. You're saying you like chocolate, Tayo. You're being honest. And you've said, you've tried. It's a small, it's a really long journey. Lifestyle, lifestyle changes is a long journey. It's not mm -hmm. instant. It's not a diet. So if your body is craving sugar at that moment, then you need to give it the right kind of sugar. Yeah. If you know that your snacking leans more on the sweet and sugary stuff um, side, then, you know, find alternatives to those sweet and sugary stuff. Um, yeah, side. absolutely. And during this but, lockdown, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I've been eating um, carrot and uh, reg all the time. I've been swapping it with um, uh, alternatives. Well, yeah. Like, for instance, somebody has said here, rice cakes and peanut butter yeah, is a yeah. nice snack. I also know somebody else that does um, banana and peanut butter. Yeah. So again, and I think with lifestyle changes back to the snacks and food, you've got to be willing to adventure and try. Yeah. I have never been the greatest adventurous in food. I would stick to what I know. But in trying to change the lifestyle, I had to I, I adventured into the 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 peanut butter and um uh, wheat crackers and I kind of liked it, but again, too much of everything is yeah. no good. All right, so I'm just gonna hang fire there. There was another question that came in um, about honey. And I think that was when you were doing alternatives. So I think the question was, been, is there an alternative to honey? Yes. If you're going to use honey, then use Manuka honey. Use the highest grade of honey. The most expensive as well. The most expensive one. And then you could use Argive um, syrup, which is made from a nectar. So that is that can also can be a replacement. There's different alternatives, but anyone that's using honey, use the highest grade of anything that you're using, but use it in small quantity because they tend to be concentrated. Okay, okay, that's cool. I think someone said something about um, on paper we actually eat more direct from farm produce in Africa. However, as the time has grown in middle class, has meant we associate a better life with affording processed foods in fancy wrappings. Most of us, first and second generation Africans, grow with that, and it becomes hard to change once older. I agree with that. Yep. And for me, um, what I enjoy now is reviewing the old recipes my grandma and my mum has taught me, and actually finding nutritional benefits and finding a healthier way of cooking those meals. Again, when I went to Nigeria, your diet changes to the climate and your environment. I couldn't be eating salad. I couldn't be doing Greek salad in the hot sun. I tried that and then he fainted. I had to switch to eating more food that will give me a longer source of energy to cope with the environment that I'm in. So instead of eating potato, I was eating yam to give me a longer source of energy. You also have to look at your environment. We live in a colder climate. If you're living in a colder climate, you're more tend to spend more time inside because you want to keep warm. But in the summertime, you tend to learn that you shed more because you're more active, you're more outside. And so you have to adapt your meals to whatever climate and season that you're, you're in. We know that we've been in a lockdown for a year and a half a lot of us haven't had physical e exercise so you need to cut cut down on things that gain weight that put on weight for you yeah. and move into smaller portions so and I think it, and I think it's also um I think it's also gradual someone's just come in and said um cut sugar out little by little yeah. and, I, and I, I find that with every with everything yeah. if you just go from 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 10 to zero in fact your, your body will it will react yeah. it will react to it because you're you're not used to it so bringing it down so back to the snacker because the snacker earlier on just said i can't snack on carrots mm -hmm. you know what eventually you can and you know what carrots and hummus is actually a really nice snack mm -hmm. it actually is so you, and the thing is it's not that you can't it's because you don't want to we need to change our mindset and attitude to try and say that we will Okay, I'm very conscious of time and I really don't like for these webinars to go on for too long. So just a few more questions that I've seen that have come up in here. Um, 
somebody, I think it was Natasha that talked about farms and farm, Natasha, um, I don't know what area you are in. Um, if you are in Kent and somebody did say the Garden of England, there are so many um, farms around. And I know for a fact, I was extremely ignorant to knowing what farms were. And my ignorance only got released in the early part of last year when me and a, kind, and a few of my girlfriends went um, uh, uh, apple picking, strawberry picking, something picking. Honestly, and up until then, my mentality of a farm was somewhere very far, you know, in random places, the, the places that you see on the motorway that you think you can't get to. But when I went apple picking, strawberry picking, I was like, whoa, we picked courgettes. I was like, whoa. So Natasha, where, where you are, honestly, Google is our friend. Google and see what farms around you. And I think also when you go to a farm and you see the freshness of the fruit and veg, yeah. that is even quite encouraging. And it's not actually as expensive as people might think a farm is. Yeah. It's actually quite reasonable in pricing purchase from a farm. Okay, so here, another question that we had, or a comment, somebody had said, praise God, we can eat Ofada rice. Now, Ofada rice, for those of us on this call that perhaps are not of a Nigerian or an African background, it is an, yes, it is a form, rice. it's a, it's it's a wild rice. Yeah, wild, oh. <laughs> wild rice. So, but it's grown in the region of West Africa mostly. Yeah, absolutely. So for those, and I know that we have a fair few amazing patrons on this side here. Yeah. So very much so, maybe your orders may be going up for the off and rice orders. Go for it. Encourage your customers to eat off and rice. To be honest, I never actually knew that before. So that's actually quite informative for me. Okay. And then finally, um, when you were when you were showing the A and B place with the plantain and the rice, and you know what we laughed and we chuckled, but the plate with the plantain, the chicken, and the jollof rice for those of us from an African background, or just rice in general, is more appealing. It is what it is, and no one wants to. I can see the nodding. I can see the nodding. Nobody wants to go the other way. But trust me, the other way is equally as fun. And by the way. You can spice up your bulgur. You can convert your bulgur into a jello type bulgur. You can convert your bulgur into a fried, special fried rice kind of looking bulgur. You can you can spice up everything. In fact, I just said YouTube. Um, Google is your friend. Yeah. YouTube is also your best friend. I have typed so many things into YouTube in trying to incorporate incorporate my healthy lifestyle and how to cook. And I find something and I just, and to be honest, nine times out of 10, I do have the ingredients in my home. I've just not known how to combine it like that. Mm -hmm. So please check YouTube, put ingredients into YouTube. How do I cook? Couscous, whatever. And then you'll see people doing things in certain ways. Now, before we start to round off, we talked about meal planning and how to help. One thing that I do in my home here is we have, um, or as I say, we, I, uh, use a these sticky sheets that stick on um, your wall and I meal plan. I know that my discipline, I'm still working on my discipline. I know that once I make the plan for the week and that is literally a Monday, to, I won't show it to Claire because it's got my weight and my measurements on it and I don't think anybody really wants to see my weight and my measurements. But equally, it's got my food for, to eat for the week. Why does that help? Because when I go to the shop prior to this week, I am buying what I have planned to eat. So the likely chances of me picking up the extra stuff or the extra carbs isn't there because I have meal prepped. Somebody might say meal prepping is long and it's boring. It's not long and boring. It is to help tune you and keep you on track. And back to the snacker, at the bottom of my meal plan, I've got cashew nuts and fiber crackers. So I'm not ignoring that I like to snack. I am including it in my plan because that needs to be realistic to me. Then another thing that you can do, I feel like I'm in one of those shows where you just keep bringing up props. You can go and buy yourself the portion control kits. So Mo spoke about the portion control earlier on. And these plates are out there for us to buy. They've made them all tantalizing with colors and images. But if you genuinely need help in how you portion your food, buy the plate. And you know what? Even if you buy the plate, I'll be very honest. When I first bought the plate, and these plates, by the way, will have been bought from Aldi, $2.99 a plate. When I first bought this plate, 
I totally ignored the portion control. I just went with what I wanted. But you know what? I kept seeing the plate in my cupboard and I kept using it. Then there's a subconscious that tells you you're using this plate and you're not using it right. And I've now tried to do it better. And it also made me understand that in my home, my children don't eat enough greens with their foods because basically we're supposed to have a green with every one of our meals. And it taught me that we're not eating enough. We're eating, but we're not eating enough. So if you think this is going to help you, get yourself a plate. My point with this is whatever you think will help on your lifestyle journey for you and your family, do it. Because health is wealth. Okay, I'm just going to quickly look in the chat before we round off. Um, you can gel off anything. Tired, the snacker. Yep, I'm a snacker. Adriana says the same, the same eats you plan your... The same way you plan your work diary, absolutely. Same way you plan your work schedule, you plan your, your food schedule. And it, 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 can, it does turn into a habit. You do, you can it does come into a habit. I'm of African culture, I'm of African and Nigerian heritage. I don't leave off my Nigerian food because for me in my household, that's not practical, but it will not be present in every day of my meals. Or maybe the days that I think we might be having a slightly heavier style African meal, the meals in the lunch or the breakfast are lighter and, e and easier so that I can enjoy it perhaps in the evening. It's just about, I think, being a lot more conscious and making those conscious de decisions. Okay, somebody has said, how about soups and stews? Now, when I hear soups and stews, I hear oil. Now, Mo, before you talk, you spoke about the thumb and the oil quantity. Now, when you told me that, I looked at that and I thought, this amount of oil is not going to do anything to my meal. For yourself. When you're cooking for myself. For yourself. This is the amount of oil you're supposed to be having. Yeah. This and if I was having, let's say, for instance, a meal that required a sauce of like um, Nando's mayonnaise sauce, you're saying that just this tiny bit I'm supposed to have. <laughs> I'm supposed to have. <laughs> and do you know what? It looks so difficult. And I'm probably sure time one will be difficult, time two will be difficult, but by time three, you probably start to adjust. Mm. I've not started doing the fun portions yet and I'll be very honest. But soups and stews, I know we have to reduce our oils. I know oils can be heavy or you go back to alternatives, yeah. better option oils. You've got the olive oils that are better options. You've got the garlic oils that are better options. Everything has a better option. But it's sometimes we tend to easier go for the not so better option. Regarding bread, who doesn't like to have a slice of toast with tea or a slice of toast with, with you know, whatever next to it? Go for the better option. The better option, the fiber bread, the brown bread, the... Um, uh, uh, all the breads are better options. Just, um, <laughs> but you've got the what? Bread. Yeah. Seeded bread. You've got seeded bread. bread. <laughs> right. Let's go. Right. T two rye bread. Almond almond bread. <laughs> no, no, almond almond bread. That you don't really get that. Almond flour, you will use that for your cakes, your biscuits. That's more preferable for that. I mean, just during this lockdown, I learned how to make cake out of almond flour. And then wow. I didn't really see any difference out of it. And also using um, polenta, which is also a good source to make um, cake from. And that's from corn. See, Adrina has said she has managed to get her family to switch from switch to seeded bread. Exactly. It's a training, you know what they're used to seeing okay fine now we are no longer seeing that we're now seeing this and then we bought that oh mm, this is yummy and eventually it becomes it becomes yummy it's it's do you know what as with everything and I think if you've been on a previous meeting with me here we always talk about mindset and I think mindset comes into every area of our life health finance fitness fashion everything falls back to your mindset you know so I really hope um somebody said seeded bread has a nice crunch to it when <laughs> um I hope this has been in some way beneficial and again I've said this before in many meetings before you've probably not heard anything that you haven't heard before 
But at the same time, it will give you a kick to think, you know what? Let me just try that thing. And if, if and or let me at least change one thing this week. You know what? I have tea every break at work at home or whatever. I'm going to take my sugar down from two spoons to one. Or I'm going to change it from sugar to honey. Or I'm going to change it from sugar to sweetener. Maybe you start by doing something bit by bit. I know for me, drastic moves don't work. I regress. Immediately I'll regress. So maybe slowly you incorporate. And those of us on here that have families, my personal suggestion, bread seeded bread is bait. My personal suggestion is as you change your lifestyle, it's not just your lifestyle you're changing. You are changing your family. One, it helps you to just cook the one meal for the household. And then two, everybody benefit because for me i i would struggle to cook myself and my husband a lovely green meal and then i now go and put my children on full-on chips and sausages and whatnot yes occasionally it does happen but the majority of the time we all swing the same way and we all eat the same food and everybody gains and also financially it's cheaper and don't forget shop in all shops you've got your Audi you've got and you know what I actually really like the vegetables in Audi Mm -hmm. absolutely in fact I have a I have a very good friend that when she cooks and she gives me vegetables they're from Audi Mm -hmm. and the vegetables are on point so sometimes we have this attitude of we need to go to um uh big tros or marks and sparks or wherever no we don't to be honest we don't we can go to your everyday normal shops the tesco's the aldi's the sainsbury's and pick up the veg make sure you pick up the good ones and not the rotten ones and go home do a quick youtube and make up something honestly veg colorful is so beautiful and actually when you're eating you're like oh this is this is nice um awesome right somebody said bad diets affects our children's development and concentration there you go so let's show oh yes and those of us that have children on here i'm very sure we can vouch to the lack of concentration and if there's lack of concentration in the children how much more we as adults as well so whatever affects them it affects us but thank you somebody said when is Mo coming back we want her back how do we train our kids to eat but you know what that's a good point that's another that's a good session for children and in fact these the bowls the bowls that i bought actually helped me to try and bring the fun side of healthy eating to my children so yeah there is definitely a, an opportunity to have a session to encourage us with our children but we are now at 20 past seven and i always like to try and keep it about quarter quarter past thank you so much for being a part of this event um look out for the email mo you have been absolutely splendid. If you haven't checked out Mo's Petit Monger page on Instagram, please check. In fact, just the colors alone of how she displays the food will encourage you. Go check out the colors, go check out the beauty. And not only that, she puts education to the food. She explains the benefits of different types of foods that we can and we should be eating. So please just check out her page, follow her and see what we should be eating and the benefits to our health. Remember, health is wealth. God bless you guys and have an awesome evening. Thank you for coming.